Let's learn about PGAI Vectorizer, a new developer tool that puts embedding creation on autopilot, allowing you to build AI systems like RAG and search and agents a lot more easily when you use Postgres and PG Vector as your vector database. The cool thing about PGAI Vectorizer is that it allows you to treat vector embedding creation pipelines as if it were a database index, something that automatically keeps your vector embeddings in sync as the underlying data on which they are based changes with ads, deletes, or even updates to the content. In this video, I'm going to take you through how PGAI Vectorizer works and also show you a demo about how you can create embeddings with PGAI Vectorizer in just a few minutes using the example of Sam Altman's blogs. Let's get into it. So what I have in front of me is a system overview, a system architecture diagram of PGAI Vectorizer. The first part is that you control PGAI Vectorizer from the database. You set up the Vectorizer in SQL and everything that Vectorizer needs to operate is actually in the database. So you have your source data table with your data that you want to create embeddings on. You have your embeddings table that you actually want to store and search with PG Vector. PG AI Vectorizer also includes a work queue table that tells you what works need, that needs to be done and a configuration and storage table that tells you how you want to create your embeddings. But not everything happens in the database. There's an external worker here that's very important and this can live either on your local machine in another Docker container, you can host it in the cloud somewhere, or you can use the hosted version on Timescale Cloud where it's executed via cloud functions. And what this does is five things, is that first, whenever new data is added to the source data table, or maybe data gets deleted or changed, it checks for work in the work queue that whenever the changes happen, triggers a new uh, row in the work queue table. And then what happens is the worker then reads the config from the database. This includes things like chunking instructions, formatting instructions, which embedding module you're using. And then it does the chunking and formatting, and then it sends it to the embedding service. The embedding service also, again, takes place outside the database. In this case, we're using the OpenAI API, and you send and receive embeddings from the OpenAI API to your worker. And then finally, the worker writes the embeddings to the storage table using the PG vector data type. And so all of this is database centric, but it's split up into these multiple co components so that you can scale each one individually, allowing you to scale to millions of embeddings per second, allowing you to do things like rapid experimentation and testing, as well as just keep up with the day-to-day -day demands of your data changing. Now that you understand the PGAI vectorizer system, let's take a look at a demo of using PGAI vectorizer on a blog example to create embeddings and we're going to do some semantic search. So I'm here in the PGAI GitHub. This is how you get started with PGAI vectorizer. And what I'm going to do is take you through this vectorizer quick start that shows you how to set up PGAI vectorizer in your local machine. And so what I have in front of me is this Docker compose file. And what it's going to do is it's going to set up two services. One service is the database, it's a Postgres database. And another one is a vectorizer worker, which is going to be actually doing the work of creating the embeddings and chunking the data. So I actually have already set up the database. I'm going to show you that this database is set up. So let's go and connect to my Postgres database. As you can see, the connection succeeded. You can see I have these extensions installed on it, PG vector, PG vector scale, and also the PG AI extension. And I also have some tables, two tables of blogs, which we're going to take a look at in a second. I've also actually loaded some data already in the table. So I'm switching to my favorite Postgres admin tool, just because it allows you to see the data a bit better. And in this case, as I mentioned, I have some blog posts from Sam Altman. So you can see blogs about GPD 4.0, DALI 2, and some also blogs about startup advice. And these blogs are quite long. So for example, if we look at this one, this is hundreds of words. This is not all going to fit into a single embedding. And so you need to do some chunking and formatting. And we'll take a look at how Vectorizer handles that in a second. And so this is the blogs that I have, and I'm going to use this as my sample data. So let's take a look at how to create a Vectorizer that's going to automatically create and sync embeddings. Uh, go into my ID here, and then I'm just going to copy this query that, uh, that sh uh, shows you how to create a Vectorizer 
for this blog data. You specify the table that this is going to act on, in which, in this case, uh, the blogs table. Uh, you also specify the embedding model and uh, dimensions that you want to use, and then specify the chunking, how you want to split up the long pieces of text and the column with which to chunk, in this case, the content column. And then finally, some custom formatting. In this case, I'm going to include more information about the blog post, such as the title and URL, in addition to the chunk. So let's copy this over and let's run this in order to create our vectorizer and then we'll take a look at what to do next. So our vectorizer got created. You can see here, create vectorizer. So we're going to go back to the blog post. And now we're at the stage where we actually are going to create the vectorizer worker. So now I'm going to run this command to create the vectorizer worker. And what you'll see is if we take a look at the logs, the actual worker got created and now it's actually running. The vectorizer worker is actually running. So we're going to give it a few seconds to do that. Now that the vectorizer worker is actually running, we can query the embeddings that have been created and let's see what actually got created so far. So as you can see here, I've got 10 embeddings created. And again, I didn't have to write any of this code. All I did was specify the vectorizer and in the background, it goes and creates the embeddings and it applies the chunking functions and the formatting that I want. So in this case, you can see the title and the URL have been added as well as the content from the blog post and it creates embedding. And this took place all in the vectorizer worker, all in the background. And so now that I have these embeddings created, I'm going to use PG vector and PG AI in order to do a semantic search query for this term generative AI models. And let's see which chunks we have that are most related to this term. So that's query is running. And as you can see here, the, the chunks that are most related come from the blogs about GPD 4.0 and DALI 2. Uh, and you can take a look at, we can view some of them just to verify. This is what we expect the most relevant chunks are related to about these AI models. So as you can see in the few minutes that I've just been playing around with PGI vectorizer, I've managed to load in some sample data, create embeddings and do semantic search starting from scratch. And that's the power of PGI vectorizer. As you can see, embeddings were created for me in the background without any action needed from my side. Once you've gotten past just understanding how to get started, you can use it to test an experiment in order to make sure that you can improve your RAG application and your search application. One of the cool ways of doing this is to actually test different embedding models. So here, for example, I'm testing the text embedding three small model, but I'm using a different dimension. And what happens is that this gets stored in a different storage table in a different embedding storage view. And then I can A-B test, I can do a gradual rollout. I can just compare on my evaluation sets how my RAG looks with these different models. And this is especially useful if you want to upgrade your embedding models. So for example, if you're moving from OpenAI Text Embedding Ada 2 to one of the new Text Embedding 3 models, this is a really easy way to upgrade your embedding models and test and add new embedding models. Another thing that you can do is test with different chunking and formatting strategies. So let's say, for example, you want to test bigger chunks or smaller chunks, or for example, you want to test adding more metadata into the chunk to see if that improves your RAG responses. This is an easy way to do it without having to manually or set up, write your own pipelines in order to re-embed your data. This is all handled by the PGAI vectorizer. And all you have to do is again, specify declaratively what do you want, and it will take care of it in the background as if it was a database index. One other interesting thing about PGI Vectorizer is that this is all transparent to the developer. This is not really an opaque system. So you can see here, if you look at the AI schema, we have a bunch of different tables that we make available, including the Vectorizer table, the Vectorizer errors, Vectorizer status. And if you had to look at all these tables, you can see for every Vectorizer that's created, what are the pending items that they have? What is a view name? What is a target table? And then also, for example, for the errors, it allows you to take a look and see, are there any errors? What's the error message? So again, even though all this takes place in the background, you have full transparency and full control over what's going on. I showed you how to get started and create embeddings automatically and have them automatically sync as the data in your table changes, all using Postgres, all without any additional user intervention. This is available on the PGAI GitHub. It's an open source product. And so you can use it 
on any Postgres database, or you can try it in the Timescale Cloud if you prefer a hosted option. The main thing to remember is that PGAI lets you say goodbye to stale embeddings and allows you to put your embedding creation on autopilot. So if you want to build better AI applications with Postgres and spend less time on your AI infrastructure, check out PGI Vectorizer today.